how do banishings work? You know what? That's a great fucking question. I think I'm uniquely qualified to perhaps answer that. First and foremost, we got to start with what magic is. Now, I know quickly a lot of you are going to jump to the, oh, well, Crowley said it is the change of consciousness at will. And it is, but that's a very low level understanding of what magic really is. However, and I, I put that caveat there because he's he's right in so many ways, but it's not that what he said was wrong, it's how others have interpreted it, and most importantly, not interpreted it. Consciousness, a change in consciousness is a change in vibration. That is we should universally agree on. However, consciousness and vibration, when those are woven together, what they're really doing is they are activating places between the manifest and the unmanifest that are in subtle combinations of the two. Now, this is important because within the scope of thought, different areas exist between the unmanifest and the manifest that contain necessary vibrations for that leading into manifestation and that leading away from manifestation. So most of us know that as the tree of life, which is probably the best glyph to to illustrate this point. Pretty basic, right? Tree of life. Now, the two most important spheres on the tree of life Earth Uranus Unmanifested Manifested. I mean if you really want to break it down It's that. It's all possibility into a possibility. All into a singular. This contained everything it could be. This is what it is. All this is the process in between. That is the great and grand formula to get from here to here. That's why you can say thing, that's why you can say magic is all in the mind, or all things are of the mind. But that that also has a major caveat placed upon it. Because if you're talking about the God brain, now I view Yehovah, Yahweh, anything to do with Judeo Christianity as being a God with severe mental uh, problems. So I do not mean to say God brain as in prime creator. Okay, so if we look at prime creator, that thought process. Prime creator thought, am I alone? And the answer was no. The simple thought process created something by which could speak back. So prime creator gave 
the consciousness to something to be able to respond, no, you are not alone. The God brain, the primal creator, ah, prime, primal creator works just as well, may have been the mind, is the mind of the entire universe, but just like you could plant an acorn that becomes an oak, the seed of that thought has now expressed into a almost infinite amount of expressions of that singular thought. So yes, the universe is the mind. Your brain is the, is the storehouse for all potentiality only as much as your imagination is capable of continual expansion. So you think a thought, and then that thought becomes an action. You have just created reality. This is why I, I oftentimes will give out information, but only take it to a certain degree. Because the multi-layered nature of even, let's say, the lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, or the uh, celestial armor of my order, each level takes you to a new expansion, a new awareness that with it also carries the an entire new basis of reality for which there are entities, which there are intelligences, and for which there are consequences for you interacting with. So people have been very upset that I've only released the second level of the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, that I have only, I think, the fourth level of the Celestial Armor. In truth, I didn't have to fucking teach you the first one. Let's just understand that. I didn't have to fucking do anything. But I'm a nice guy. And I care. And so I gave information out that would help you increase what you're already doing. So, until the spirits that I work very close with begin to really push me to to release the third, the fourth, and the fifth, I won't do it. Because if I release that information prematurely, I put you in a position that I am not there to actually navigate you through. I was lucky enough to have a mentor that I could spend a great deal of personal time with. And that was over a course of 20 plus years. So it's not like I started learning, you know, five years ago and decided, oh, well, now I'm going to release some information that people probably ought to have. It's not as though it was something so simple as maybe two, three years of training and now I'm a magician. No, 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 no. We're talking 20 plus years under two different mentors, two different mentors that happened to know each other. And I was introduced to the last one through the first. But still, that's 20 years of needing to understand the subtleties of each level, of each energetic vibration that occur. And that's why I can talk about this and why I often marvel on simple things because I get the complexity behind them between the unmanifested and the manifested and this crazy fucking formula that separates the two but truly doesn't separate them unites them stronger and stronger and stronger and this is the basis for which the entire banishing works because you go from this principality of nothing but everything and then you go to this singularity this expression of the first and within this contains potential for everything else. Just because this manifested 
And just because some alternate dimension of manifest also occurred doesn't mean that these two do not follow the same formula back to the source. This is, in key, this is key to understanding why banishing works and how it, how it works as opposed to it's just magic. So let's just say there's an alternate dimension, and trust me, there are alternate dimensions. They have been manifested by the same sources because they may be vastly different because seemingly on the surface, the physics may be different between how the physical sciences of each of these manifested realities work does not mean they do not share so much in common that they were born from the same source. That's why you can have interdimensional travel but still operate on the physical level. When we talk about prime creator, we are talking about the entire source of the of everything. When I say universe, all things, all things, just because you're in Delacroix, all right, and you're in a high rise in Delacroix, or you're living in the basement of a crack house in Delacroix, and there might be a lot of crack houses in Delacroix, um, doesn't mean that you're not in Delacroix. So the Earth as we know it and an alternate dimension is in Delacroix if this is if, if 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 this prime creator is Delacroix. Do you get it? The entire universe encompasses all multi-layer multiverses. So the universe all it is, is this huge, unending expanse that gives room for all potentiality to exist and to manifest. And if it manifested, then it follows these laws. Now, just because the glyph is more comfortable to me and to many, many others because we have been conditioned to look at it in this function, in in this particular representation, doesn't mean if this was shifted around into a crazy ass circle with you know like squares and triangles and and if it was flipped upside down and turned inside out, it would still work the same way because these are universal principles that don't have to be expressed exactly the same way for it still to go from unmanifest to manifest. That's why you can banish inter, inter, I, well, I'm going to say interdimensional, interdimensional and hyperdimensional entities because while they are still hyperdimensional, let's just look at it this way. Reptilian entities, by which I know well, even, let's just say, grays. Let's just say transplutonian entities. Let's just say anything that travels outside of a physical body now operates within this realm. They're not unmanifested because they have a physical body which is manifested. But because their awareness is, I have a vehicle, because I am physical, I have a vehicle that operates on the astral plane, I have a vehicle that operates on the mental plane, I have a vehicle that operates on the emotional plane, I have a higher self, I have a self that is interlocked with conflict, I have a self that is the arbiter of all other selves, I have the self that patterns and structures myself, and I have a self that is infinite in its energetic uh, emissions throughout the universe, and I come from the unmanifest.
okay? When you have a physical body, you are linked to every single universal principality that exists. If you are doing, well, I'm going to add the little secret one here. If you are doing the middle pillar ritual, and why the fuck are you not? Then you are coming to terms and meeting all these other vehicles. So let's just say that there is some entity on Spicy Wing Prime, whatever, the lord and master of all buffalo wings, and he has decided to leave his body and come bother this poor vegan girl on planet Earth, all right? Here is the vegan girl on planet Earth. And he is going to tempt her with his meaty deliciousness, and she finds this relatively offensive, all right? So, he has entered into this in-between space between the unmanifested and the manifested, all right? That is the that is the great astral sea for which he may go visit all other alternate realities and dimensions, but still remain physical. All right. He has a physical body. He is he is traveling through the astral seas to find this poor little vegan girl. All right, and whip out his meatiness and try to tempt her with it. Okay. Now, because he is not physically next to her, okay, because he doesn't kick at her door, all right, and jump up on her dinner table and dance, he is taking an energetic path to her. Now, if they were to meet in the physical, just the same way I can't banish you. So if you meet me and you're annoying as fuck, I can't trace a banishing pentacle, or I'm sorry, a banishing pentagram in front of you and make you disappear. Believe me, there's lots of individuals I wish I could do that to. No, I need my fist or a gun to really effectively do that. That is the banishing ritual of the physical world, is a fist or a gun. Um, <laughs> whole other component <laughs> going on with the uh, physical banishing ritual, which maybe we'll get to that. And 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 believe me, for those of you annoyed with the uh, that I haven't released a lot of information about the layers of the uh, banishing ritual, of the pentagram. Um, trust me, there are multiple layers of the physical banishing ritual <laughs> as well. So he travels through the energetic world. Now, because she has a physical body, she has connections to all these other spheres, she can, through her physical body, while she is in the physical form, while she is conscious not only of her physical body and all the other apparatuses in between, she can draw a banishing pentagram. Starting from here, banishing back to the unmanifest. I don't want you here. Go. Leave. Leave this, leave this physical plane. Now, is he actually on the physical plane? Yes and no. This is kind of a trick video because we're going to talk about two different types of banishings. He has a physical body, but because he cannot yet travel the energetic world and re-manifest his physical body next to hers, she is capturing him in transit. So as he energetically leaves his body and comes closer to her physical body, she can use the domain that she has over energetic beings because of her physicality, because the unmanifest and the manifested are so similar that they might as well be one. Ah, hmm. 
which then leads to the question where Prime Creator actually exists. But that's a whole other video. So, because she, as a physical being, has the splendor and the grand honor to make everything real, she can take any thought, and if she works, she can build it upon the physical plane. She can take the thoughts, run them through her own personal magical vehicle, and turn them manifested. So this happens within and without you, above and below. That's why that maxim works so amazingly well. So the king of all buffalo wings is coming to travel to see her. She can banish back his energetic representation, his energetic vehicle away from her because she has the power or the weight of the physical world behind her. Okay, she has the momentum, the leverage, the power to trace a banishing pentagram, and because of her, her feet are plastered firmly in the physical world, she commands the power of the physical world to give this weight, to give this form, to give this function over the spirits, the principalities, the intelligences of the not quite physically manifested. They're, they're, they're real enough because they have been thought. They're real enough because they have been given capability to become manifested. Some of them have been manifested. Some of them have never been manifested. Up here, we're talking about a devious tricky world, okay? A world that is based on very subtle manipulations of the physical world. There is a reason why the old true Gnostics would say that the kingdom of heaven is built with hands of flesh. When you perform functions upon the physical world, they become real. Now doctrine becomes real. So the doctrine of, let's say, Yahweh now becomes more than just some sort of fanciful idea, some sort of um, wish that Yahweh has because his followers are now actually performing this doctrine upon the earth. Here's the real secret. Just because Yahweh talks about a kingdom of heaven, doesn't mean he has that kingdom of heaven until his followers build it for him. So, this is why the banishing works. The physical representation, while the astral world is the template, the component that gives the possibility to the singular possibility of the physical world, Okay? But once that singular physical possibility has manifested, it now sends energy back to the unmanifested, and it travels through these layers. That's why it comes down and then also goes back up. Yahweh doesn't get his grand palace and hot tub full of naive underage boys until it is built here upon the physical world for that energetic uh, vibration to flow back up to him. That's why the Vatican is so important. The Vatican contains. That's why it's called the body or the cup. That's why you can look at some of the uh, tarot cards and the ace of cups is a giant stem with a church. Because the church is the body of Yahweh upon the non-manifested realms. Do you get that? Does that make sense? So, the banishing works because she, 
in her physical understanding and in her uniting with all the sciences of magic up here, which is the in-between unmanifested and manifested, has the power to, to, to shape the astral world, okay, with her dense physical vibrations and make that banishing pentagram real, forcing the king, the, the king of buffalo wings away from her vegan purity, all right? Sending him back. No, go, leave me alone. All right, leave me alone. I send you away. Now, the only place that he really has to go back to is his own physical body. Unless he's really skilled and, and an adept, she is just saying, no, I want all non-manifested realities away from me and banishing him from her presence. Now, this works extremely well if the spirit does not have a physical vessel. But since he has a physical vessel, this could turn into a battle of will. He can continually keep coming back and coming back and trying to use his manifested power, because he has a physical body, to try and force his way against her will. Now, this works better or this individual has a better chance if they occupy the same dimensional space. Okay, now this might be a little harder for people to understand. The banishing works against unmanifested entities and intelligences because they do not have a physical anchoring. Okay, because they exist in the in-between, between the unmanifested and the manifested. These, this two battles, or this battle, is occurring between two entities that have anchored in reality a physical body. She can, because he is coming at her from a weaker standpoint of being in the unmanifested uh, vehicle of energetic travel, which could be usually seen as the astral body, because she is still anchored fully in her physical body or feels his presence around her in the extremely subtle but denser vibrations of those bodies most close to her. There's one right before the dream body, which I know I've said the dream body is the closest one. That's eh, not exactly true. It is true enough, but there's one before the dream body, and then there is the dream body itself. Because she can feel him, and she is still within her own, or her, her consciousness still is within her physical body, she can send him away. But this battle can be a lot more devious because he can just go back to his physical body and leap right back out. When you banish spirits that don't have physical anchorings, they oftentimes get tossed to the ethers. And they, they go to places they may not even recognize. They can find their way back. But it takes time, and often, oftentimes they are pulled into other jobs, they are pulled into other realities, they have a planetary functioning that they need to um, address, many, many, many reasons. However, if you are battling against a magician that has a physical body, this becomes more difficult. And eventual, and I'm going to say this out of personal experience, if you're battling magicians, eventually eventually it's probably going to become a physical battle because you've banished one another back and forth you've spent time learning about the whereabouts of each other and occasionally it's going to come down to a physical battle as opposed to just a magical battle and there there is a magicalness of the physical world trust me but in this particular section, this works. Banishings work because you have a physical body. There's so many spiritualities out there that talk about transcending the physical, leaving the physical behind, the dense, gross vibrations of the physical world. This is stupid, madness, and folly because the physical body gives you domain over the non-physical. It's such a beautiful thing. Because the physical, because the manifest and the unmanifest are so close, they are divine. 
They are the true div they are the true divinity. Everything everything in between is either trying to become manifested, was manifested, or leaning towards unmanifest. So it's powerful, but the two polarities that are strongest are the unmanifested and the manifested. Here, I'll do part two.